in listen only mode. Welcome to Madeira's webinar on Classic Rayon. My name is Alice Wolf. I do the marketing communications for Madeira USA. I'm joined here by Nancy Minnie, a senior marketing specialist and embroiderer, and Bree Casey, a graphic designer who has assembled the images for you today. We will be discussing and showing examples of what you can expect from working with Madeira's Classic Rayon. This globally popular thread is known for its reliability and ease of running, its quality and diversity. It comes in four different weights and we'll cover how to work with the different weights, how to care for items after they've been embellished with Classic Rayon, and we'll end with just a brief summary. You should see on your computer screen what looks like a, a chat box. This is for questions that you are able to type in and we can see. We'll answer as many questions as we can within this hour, so you may hear your question read out loud and answered. If you don't, please don't worry. We are collecting <clears throat> every question that is submitted and we'll be emailing out answers to all of the questions submitted to all of you. We are joined today by two very knowledgeable guests, Rich Medcraft and Michael Savoya. Rich began his company, Stitchwise Embroidery Design, <clears throat> more than 14 years ago. He specializes in high quality custom digitizing for commercial embroiderers throughout the country. Michael has been operating his Villa Savoya for over 20 years. His work focuses on textiles and their embellishment for the high-end home furnishings industry. What's particularly notable about our guests for the purpose of this webinar is that together they represent opposite ends of the industry. And I'm going to ask them both to jump in at any point throughout our presentation to please share their perspective and comments about designs and techniques. Rich digitizes for high-profile key accounts, such as the U.S. Golf Association and a large embroidery firm who does the work for Columbia Sportswear, NBC, ABC, CBS, and college sports teams. While Michael provides embroidered fabrics for the nation's top interior designers, including Michael Smith, Thomas Pheasant, and the Wiseman Group. There's a reason that our colleagues in Madeira, Germany, use the word classic and rayon interchangeably. They consider the two words to be synonymous. The dictionary defines the word classic to mean serving as a standard of enduring interest, quality, or style. And rayon embroidery thread has been the worldwide standard for decades. The first reason for that is its reliability. Its high tensile strength provides easy, dependable runnability. And it's been proven in testing that classic rayon can run for 400,000 consecutive stitches before a thread, rate, thread break may occur. Its consistency eliminates tension concerns, which leads to fewer thread breaks, having to stop and adjust the machine, resulting in less downtime. And everyone in business knows that time equals money. Consistency of dye lots means the same color will be the same color no matter which weight you choose. And if you purchase a cone of red, number 1147, in the U.S., it will be the same in the U.K., in Asia, everywhere in the world. And classic rayon colors have been matched for us by Pantone for regulation and the ability to stipulate colors in advertising or when matching corporate logos or school colors. Here are two designs done with classic rayon 48 thread. The sports balls are a stock design that was repeated and sewn along the bottom edge of the curtain. The other design has well over 100,000 stitches, and it was sewn on the back of a workwear style jacket. Both designs are functional and will hold up well through everyday wear and tear. Here is a sample stitch out design. Classic 40 weight thread was used again. It's soft and pliable and will lay well in everyday fill, satin, and decorative stitches. Let's talk about classic rayon's quality for a little while. If you think of classic rayon as being delicate, don't. It is color, for, color fast that can hold up to very high water temperatures and normal wear and tear. Its brilliant luster gives depth to your embroidery, and color numbers are standardized worldwide. Classic rayon is considered eco-friendly since it is made from cellulose or wood pulp and has been tested to be free from any harmful chemicals. 
soft and pliable, it works well on a variety of fabrics, including the very popular performance wear. Rich, you've used both rayon and polyester on performance wear. What was your finding? Well, I prefer rayon thread, especially on performance wear. For those of you out there who struggle with um, puckering issues, particularly with the high-performance um, sportswear that's out there now, uh, you'll sympathize or you'll understand that, uh, that that's a real struggle that we have. And what I, I like rayon best is that it requires uh, lighter tensioning than uh, polyester. Um, and so it lays smoother, it sews smoother, um, it melds itself to the material much better. And uh, I think you'll find that it's uh, much more friendly to, uh, to uh, that, that high-tech material that we're forced to sew on. Um, the, other, the other point I wanted to make is that, you know, everybody says, oh, well, yeah, well, I use polyester because what if they use bleach? Well, I don't know about most of you folks out there, but if you look at any of the care labels on almost any shirt, uh, I don't care whether it's polyester or it's cotton or whatever it is, it, most of them say do not use bleach. So if that's the case, really bleach is not going to be an issue when using rayon thread. Okay, thank you. Classic rayon is a very flexible thread, which means it can hold it can be laid in any direction with any design without looping. It's less abrasive to embroidery machines than synthetic threads, and when used on lingerie or children's wear or baby clothes, it's very soft against the skin and has a very soft hand, even when used in a design with a high stitch count. Here's a project that is one of Michael's, looking like it walked right off the pages of Architectural Digest. Michael, would you elaborate on this, please? Sure. <clears throat> sure. Um, it's an applique that I did for a suite of furniture in uh, one room that included four lounge chairs and two sofas. Uh, this was done for a home in uh, Long Island by the designer Thomas Pheasant. And the applique material was a heavy linen. It was um, extremely hard to cut. And I work on the frame by using cuticle scissors. So it was um, tedious, to say the least. But it is held in place by bean stitches. And then I make my cuts, and then it has rayon satin stitch done in a steel with a pattern stitch on top of it. It is so secure and so beautiful that um, the rayon itself adds to the contrast in, in textures. It's wonderful. Um, the interesting thing is on my frame, I match my patterns from one side to the next side to the next pleat, all the way around from the front to the end of the sides, and then the back I repeat the uh, front again. Thank you. Rich, these examples of your digitizing show off your talents in shading. Would you please discuss a few of these? Sure. Uh, the top design there with the uh, top left with the fish, a trout, it was digitized from a photograph, a color photograph. And um, believe it or not, that, that little fish is, uh, is not very big. It's all of about two inches by one and a half inches high, which is kind of unusual to do a blending, because usually when you think of blending, you do that on maybe large jacket backs. But um, you can actually get away with doing blends, providing it's the right type of design. Uh, blending is really a, a, a way for us to use thread to create the illusion of one color melding into another into another. The best way to do a blend is for a minimum of three colors. A lot of you folks out there have software that uh, these days is very sophisticated. And by a, a, literally a, a point and click of a mouse, you can create uh, fills and then uh, change the color and have one go the opposite direction of the other. That is, uh, this direction the same, but the actual fill directions, one bl blending into the other. Uh, but that's usually only using two colors. And so uh, you're, you're really uh, not going to get as good a result unless you use three colors. So I recommend that. Um, for example, the, the fish up, or, or the, actually the, the bottom design there, the uh, MG, uh, the magic MG design, 
there were actually three colors of green there to create that, um, that shading there. And I'm, I like to also point out that if you're, if you're new at shading or, or blending, um, one, what, one of the difficulties I ha ha had was d selecting um, thread colors. And one of the things I like about Madeira's thread color chart is that they group the thread colors together where they're uh, similar tones and shading. And so uh, it made it relatively easy for me to do this shading because I just simply picked um, three colors together. And I believe it was 1150. Um, and I forget what the other two colors were, but they're right next to each other on the color chart. And it uh, made it really nice. But basically, the idea of shading is you want the total density not to exceed uh, the standard density of a regular fill, which uh, for those of you who like numbers would be 0 .40 uh, density. So what it amounts to is you're actually layering different colors on top of each other. And um, I like to use uh, varying stitch lengths so that when they are sewn together like that and they overlap each other, uh, the stitches vary in stitch length, which even gives it more of a blending effect. Um, but altogether, if you total the total density of all of the, the green that you see there, it would not exceed uh, 0.40. And the importance of that is, of course, you don't want to uh, overwhelm the garment that you're sewing on it because then you'll cause the puckering and all kinds of distortion. But um, then I also like to use um, different types of stitch types to create a different effect. For example, the trees are a combination of running stitches and satin stitches. And the running stitches travel underneath, and then they kind of expose themselves out from underneath the tree. And then the top satin stitch is the final stitch. And that makes up most of the foliage. But it gives it an illusion of uh, being realistic trees. Rich, thank you. Um, I'm also going to ask you the next time um, you speak to one of the slides, if you could speak real loud. We have a, a question come in asking us to speak a little bit louder. And I also want to remind everybody who's listening that we are recording this, so you will be able to hear it in its entirety uh, recorded properly uh, when it's over. Very good. Let's take a look at um, Classic Rayon's diversity. Um, it's available in four different weights in order to serve every embroidery purpose. Here you can see each of them stitched out and their relationship to one another. Classic Rayon 40 is our general all-purpose embroidery thread. It's designed for use on high-speed industrial machines. This standard weight will work for nearly all embroidery designs. This tiger design was digitized for us by Lee Caracelli of Balboa, Balboa Embroidery Design for a project we were working on. Her design, along with the other two digitized by Rich, show us how well shading can be achieved with classic rayon thread. Rich, would you be willing to share your thoughts on these, these designs that you did? Sure. Um, I talked a little bit about the, uh, the trout uh, fish there, but the um, pheasant de design uh, again, there's blending in that sun there, um, and again, that was made up of three colors. There's basically kind of a yellow and an orange and, and then darker red. And a lot of it, again, is layering, and um, I would encourage anyone who's uh, never done blending before uh, to give it a try, and you can just make a simple box uh, fill with your digitizing software. And some software actually uses, um, you can do a, like an accordion fill where you can change the density from one part of the fill to the other part. So you can basically go from uh, a standard density at one end of like the sun there, and at the other end of it, it could be lightened up. And then uh, you do that in one color, and then you can come back and, and go the opposite direction with another color, and therefore get a, a shading effect. Like I mentioned before, uh, it's important to add that third color, though, to get a nice transition in the color. But it's really not that hard to do, and I think you might be uh, find it a lot of fun to do. Uh, this particular design, the Pheasants Forever, that's a, um, a, um, um, a benefit for what do they call it, one of those habitat um, designs that I did years ago. Um, they even have other, uh, I guess, bird, Birds Forever <laughs> uh, names they have now, different um, groups. But this particular one, Pheasants Forever, has been, out, been around since, uh, I guess, the late 80s. But um, again, it's uh, rayon thread offers a beautiful luster and, and color, natural color, which I really like, as opposed to polyester, which I do use, by the way, but 
Um, I prefer rayon because it gives a more natural shine, whereas polyester tends to have kind of a plasticky look. And again, I have trouble, uh, more trouble setting tensions with polyester than I do with rayon. The one thing I love about Madeira rayon thread is that it tensions really, really easily and very steady and consistently. And what I mean by that is I change col thread colors all the time. And if I'm staying with Madeira rayon thread and I go from one color to the next, very rarely do I have to change the tensions much. Um, they all stay the same. And if you use tension gauges, which I highly recommend, I, I know a lot of embroiderers don't like using gauges, but I find it really helpful to, get, to maintain consistency and to give you a feedback on what it is you're setting your tensions. Because then that way you can duplicate it from one head to the next if you have multi-head machines. But anyway, um, I think you'll find that the that rayon thread um, runs better. It runs smoother. Um, I just prefer it over uh, polyester for the most part. Again, there's certain applications where polyester is important. But I think overall, in terms of quality and beauty, uh, you can't be rayon thread. One of the questions that just came through is about um, preferring rayon versus poly and when do each of you choose one or the other. I think, Michael, you're 100% rayon and, and Rich, you're a, um, almost 100% unless the color's called for. Could you each address your decision on that a little bit? Sure, Michael, you want to take it first? Or? Sure. <clears throat> uh, my machine came with Madeira rayon. When it arrived, um, it's, it's the only thread I had. And being in the textile business for quite a long time and having once been a weaver, I recognized the lengthy staple of the thread. And it's proven to me to be one of the best threads that I could use. Um, it's strong. It's beautiful. And it melds with the fabrics that I use when I steam press it. It's just beautiful. And a lot of my designers um, actually want matte thread, but they don't really know what matte thread is. Um, they think it's cotton, but cotton also has a luster. Um, whenever I try and use cotton for them, I'm forever blowing out my machine because I've got all kinds of fuzz. And I, I just, you know, it's, it's not fun. I, I generally will do a few samples, but I'll include samples of rayon, and almost 99% of the time they will go to the rayon. Um, I, I use some polyester, um, but not very often. I, I like metallic, but I mix it with rayon because I think that tones down the metallic and makes it look more um, authentically patinated. Um, but I, I just feel very attached to my rayon thread. I need to use more of these sizes, though. I, I'm, I'm a little um, disappointed in myself for not being more experimental with the different sizes of thread. Uh, I've used 60, but this 30 sounds really interesting, Alice. I, um, I use both polyester and rayon, as I mentioned before. Um, <clears throat> I'm not just a digitizer. I also do, do uh, quite a bit of production work. And um, there are c cases where, like, if I have a hat design with a challenging design on it, maybe it's a challenging cap. As some of you know, caps can be really difficult to embroider, especially some with uh, stiff buckrams in them. Anyway, um, I find that sometimes um, I like to use polyester, especially on hat designs, uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, I think that it tends to be a little bit more forgiving um, with the sun. Uh, it doesn't fade and the sun and you know of course caps are out in the sun all the time and so sometimes that's that's of a concern and sometimes I find that the polyester is a little bit stronger so it's maybe a little uh, it can take a beating uh, on a cap uh, embroidery but overall if I have any choice at all or if I can run rayon I'll run rayon um, you mentioned 60 weight thread that's probably one of my most favorite threads in fact I think it's probably one of the best kept secrets um, for those of you out there who didn't, maybe didn't hear the, weren't around for the 60-weight thread seminar, um, Alice and I did a while back, um, I, I just think it's, um, it's a, a crucial part of any business, uh, any embroidery business, to have 60-weight thread. And the reason why is that we're being challenged more and more 
to do tinier and tinier detailed designs. Um, in fact, in the golf industry, they use 60-weight thread a lot, um, almost exclusively. Um, I tend to mix it. I like to use 60-weight thread when I'm trying to do really tiny detail, or particularly with small lettering. And those of you who struggle with small lettering know what I'm talking about. 60-weight um, thread is like a sharper pencil, and so you're able to create just that much sharper embroidery. So I, I strongly recommend trying that. And by the way, um, all the 60-weight thread, as Al said earlier, all matches the colors in 40-weight. So if you've got a design that maybe part of it is done in regular 40-weight thread, say 1147 red, uh, you'll be able to use 60-weight thread uh, in the same color red. If, if there was lettering, for example, done in red in the same design. Um, we're going to talk about 60-weight thread here down the road, so I don't want to get too much more involved in that. But um, I, like I said, there's different applications for each thread. Uh, thread of choice for me, again, is, is the rayon. If you people have trouble with setting tensions, I think you'll find that you'll have less trouble using rayon thread than polyester. Rich, speaking of the tension, um, for the ones that do use the tension gauge, can you, number one, give them those um, numbers that you set that tension gauge or what you're looking for you, um, on the tension gauge, and that. also um, address the stitches per minute, you know, what your recommended oh. speeds are? Oh, yes. Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, well, rayon thread, as I re suggested earlier, um, requires less tension than polyester, and, and I'll give you some numbers. If some of you use the pencil-looking uh, type gauge, uh, that's called the upper thread tension gauge. Um, that gauge, um, again, it's a matter of setup. Uh, if any of you follow those directions, they're, they're pretty basic, and uh, you'll get a slight difference from one gauge to the next. That is one pencil gauge setup to the next. But generally speaking, I set my rayon tensions uh, between 120 and 130 grams, which is the little uh, indication you'll see on the pencil itself on the gauge. When I'm running rayon thread, I'll, I usually run that about 10 to 20 grams uh, heavier, so I run that up to 150. Um, rayon, or excuse me, polyester tends to stretch, and, and, and so um, you, you have to have a little bit tighter tension, whereas rayon doesn't stretch. And so it, it, that's why I think it runs so smooth, is that you can set it at a lighter tension and it just seems to run evenly. One thing you can do to kind of confirm that is to look at the back of your embroidery, and especially column, fill, column areas and lettering. If you see an even distribution of your bobbin and your top thread colors, uh, like it's the one-third, two-third rule, like most of you know, um, if you see that it's a nice even uh, uh, lines of the top thread versus the bobbin thread, you'll know that you're getting a nice even steady tension. Whereas if you've got an erratic kind of running thread, which quite honestly I've had some issues with polyester doing that, you'll look at the back and you might see that bobbin thread uh, line in the center being real ragged. And that, in my mind, affects the quality of the embroidery. Um, but anyway, uh, as far as your bobbin tension, remember you have to set that in a balance to the upper thread tensions. So if you use a TOA gauge, which is that little gauge that you can actually set on a tabletop and put the bobbin case in with the bobbin, um, I run those, again, without the, not running it through the pigtail and just run it through the little wheels on the gauge. And the reading on that, I, I like to run that about 20 to 22 grams. Um, you can use the upper thread tension gauge to actually set your bobbin tension gauges, but um, I prefer the, the toe gauge. So I would encourage all of you out there, if you've not messed with gauges, uh, that you look into it seriously. Because if you've got a big production shop and you've got a lot of employees and they're running many different machines, um, you might end up with thread tensions all over the map. Whereas if you have a quantifiable way of, of uh, controlling that and therefore using gauges, uh, you'll have real control of your quality and, and consistency of your embroidery. Rich, just repeat the numbers of the two tensions that you mentioned, please. You bet. Uh, with the pencil gauge, I use 120 to 130 for rayon, and for polyester, 140 to 150. Thank you. And then if, and Michael, then if you're a using question? The toe, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, and then the toe gauge, uh, that is the bobbin gauge, would be a different uh, device, a different setting, but that tension would be about 20 to 22 grams for the bobbin itself. Thank you. 
Uh, and Michael, a question came in for you when you mentioned mixing metallic with the classic rayon. Question how you do right. that? <clears throat> I just split the density in half and I run the rayon first and then I run the metallic over it so that I have um, a light density on both. Okay, thank you. Here are three more designs we wanted to share with you. The cathedral, sorry, the cathedral on the right side is an example of a photorealism embroidery. And the two on the left are examples of, de of the detail you can actually achieve with classic rayon. Sixty weight classic rayon was designed for small lettering down to three millimeters and fine detail. Thinner than 40 weight, it is the thinnest thread in the classic rayon line. It is ideal for decorative stitching on delicate fabrics, and it's used to create subtle highlights and shadows on intricate designs. It offers the precision that is needed for small lettering, and since it's a finer thread, which can be sewn with a smaller needle, the reduced penetration points from the needle allow for the increase of detail in your design. Um, Rich, you have a time-saving trick. Would you share that as far as um, for people that don't like to stop and change a needle? Certainly. Um, I think one of the reasons why, quite honestly, we all don't like to change thread around is because it's time consuming. But um, again, I use 60 weight so often and I, I find it so useful that on my machines I keep one to two needles always set up with 60 weight thread. So I would recommend that to all you folks out there is 60 weight thread, uh, really for best results you use a size 9 needle. And, uh, but you can use a size 10 needle, which is also what I use uh, on my regular 40 weight thread for the most part. But anyway, if you have that one, let's say the 14 and 15 needle, or if you have a 12 needle machine, the 11 and 12 needle position, uh, always set up with the 60 weight thread. Um, I think you'll find it, you'll use it a lot more and it's, it, it takes less time uh, to, to use it. To, and, and the other thing about 60 weight thread, you, you want to talk about tensioning again is 60 weight thread requires slightly less tensioning than 40 weight thread. So to give you another number, if you're a numbers guy like I am, um, I like to use a tension gauge for those and I set those somewhere around 100 to 110 grams. So just a little bit lighter, you don't have to have it quite as tight as 40 weight thread even, and, uh, and it works beautifully. And by the way, a lot of people stay away from 60 weight thread because they think it's not production friendly. Well, I got to tell you, I run uh, multi-head machines, and I'm running a design right now, 200 shirts, and I'm using 60 weight thread, and I don't have any thread breaks, any more thread breaks than I would if I use 40 weight thread. And of course, a lot of that's just having your machine set up correctly. But for most of us, you know, like I said, our machines are run well, and 60 weight thread can run high production just like 40 weight. Thank you. Check out the dimensions that are listed alongside these 60 weight designs. They put detailing, they put the detailing that is possible into perspective. Rich, classic rayon 60 is your favorite thread, as you mentioned before, for achieving the impossible. Would you care to elaborate? Um, I, I think that you already have a little bit, but if you wanted to maybe focus on some of these designs and give us a little bit sure. more. You bet. A friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, Pat Williams, digitized that Don't Bug Me design. And um, if you looked at this in person, I think you'd be just amazed. Um, the little black uh, detail stitching on all the little creatures there was uh, 40 weight, or excuse me, 60 weight thread. And um, what you could do, I, I, I would encourage you, if you have a design that is really small and you've uh, digitized it or had somebody digitize it for you, uh, do an experiment. Um, run like the black detail stitching in regular 40 weight, like you could take this design, don't bug me, and run it that way. And then turn around and run it again, only this time switch that last detail stitching to the 60 weight, and you would be absolutely amazed at the difference. It is just that much better uh, detail. And the reason for that is, again, it's like a sharper pencil, so you can get much closer uh, stitches together and not have the openings close up. And that's why in small lettering in particular, it works really well because for those of you who have struggled with a small lettering, that like in the lowercase a's and e's where the little openings tend to close up, 
Uh, and that's just because of the, uh, the way um, embroidery is. There's only so much room to put a stitch. And if you put the stitches too close together, then that, that space closes up. Well, 60 weight thread allows you just that much more room in there. And that little extra space opens up. And then all of a sudden, that little lettering looks really sharp, whereas it didn't look before. So again, like I said, you can experiment by just trying it. And it's very inexpensive, too, by the way. It's, I mean, you can spend less than four or five bucks, I think, for a spool of thread. And, uh, and it's, just, it's just too easy to use. And I, I have to say this. If you have competition out there, like most of us, uh, you want to separate yourself from the competition, right? Well, what easier way to do that than to use this magic thread? And I, I kid you not, it is magic. And it, it is a wonderful thread, and it, it's very little money. And you will have your customers asking you, how did you do that? And it's because of this wonderful thread that Madura makes. Thank you, Rich. Here are some more classic Rayon 60 weight thread designs. Remember that when you choose to try 60 weight thread, you'll want to let your digitizer know if you use an outside digitizer. Um, they will need to increase the design density by 25 to 30 percent. Yeah, that's an important point to make. Um, and, and one thing that if you get a design done like by me uh, um, and or another digitizer and they, they are using 60 weight thread or specify it, you want to make sure that you make note of that. Because if you try to run a design uh, that was digitized for 60 weight thread and use 40 weight, um, you're probably going to have a few problems. It's just too, many, too much stitches, too, too dense for that type of uh, thread. So you want to make sure you note, of, note that. And we actually um, do, we offer a density chart, a stitch length chart, um, that type of thing for all of our threads. It's on our website um, because those are specific um, to the thread itself. And for those of, the, for those of you that do do digitizing on your own, um, that chart is going to give you what you need in order to um, be able to accomplish working with these threads. Um, and we'll make sure that that information is available to you in our follow-up email. And for those of you who like numbers, again, I guess I'm I guess the numbers guy here, but um, the lettering, usually lettering, um, when you do it over uh, like a blank garment, just lettering on its own, we typically tell our customers that we really can't do anything smaller than about five millimeters in height. Well, that lettering um, you see on the left of the Fort Huachuca design there, I believe that lettering is about three, three and a half millimeters in height. So if you try to use 40 weight thread there, the little crossbars on the E um, and the, where the, how the S is created, the little openings uh, on the top and bottom portion of the S, all that would probably close up with 40 weight thread. But 60 weight allows you to get that lettering down that small. Thank you, Rich. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to take a look at um, classic gray on number 30 which is a thicker embroidery thread and used for filling in large areas in a design. Um, in fact, this can reduce your stitch count by about 20% when used for fill in, in a design. And it's ideal for use on heavy fabrics. And Michael, this was a, a thread that you showed some interest in earlier. Um, here's an example of one. This design is a semi full front shirt design that was stitched, stitched out on a sweatshirt. Um, classic Rayon 30 weight was used in the larger letters of the design, giving it a unique look while reducing the stitch counts of these areas. Classic Rayon number 12 is the thickest thread in the Classic Rayon line and perfect for edging garments or patches. Um, a needlepoint effect can be achieved when this thread is run on a standard embroidery machine and it can make a design look as though it was hand embroidered. Classic Rayon 12 is perfect for special outlines, fancy stitches, and heavier designs. Michael, something you might want to keep in mind for some of the things that you have coming up. Absolutely. These designs here were stitched out with Classic Rayon 12 weight thread. The turtle has a unique look to it using most, mostly the satin stitches, while the flower-like designs have a hand-embroidered look. A um, couple questions about needles. We have a needle chart coming up that will actually answer your question on your needle sizes. Hello. Yep. 
How large are these flower shapes? They are about, I would say, about two inches tall, two wow. inches square. Wow. Yeah, I think that I'm going to have to explore 30 and 12. <laughs> we'll get some samples in the mail to you very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you might like that. One thing I think we all tend to forget about and, uh, is that embroidery is dimensional. And I like to express that to my customers that offer me these designs that do that have all these back shadows and drop shadows and extra outlines and all that kind of thing. Because what they've done is they've created those, those designs in a graphics program. And they're probably necessary to have all those drop shadows and, and everything to create a, a dimensional effect because it's, they're used to printing. But because embroidery is dimensional, you don't need that. And I would think that with this 30 and 12 weight thread, that even adds dimension. Again, you're getting much, much more of a loft. And so when the light hits it, it's going to reflect more uh, extravagantly, I think, more um, beautifully. And uh, so I'm with uh, Michael. I think there's a lot to be uh, said about trying that kind of thread. Sounds good. What I find really interesting is the possibility of mixing all four. Um, I, I, I really think that I can, webinar, I, I can do that. I mean, I, I, my designs lend themselves to uh, fluctuating in, in dimension. And to have access to those different sizes of thread and um, working with them accordingly, I think, is going to be really beautiful. OK. Um, let's take a look at colors for a little bit. Um, while Classic Rayon is available in well over 400 colors, in addition to the solids, you'll find Astro, Multi, and Ombre for easy running special effects. Here are some examples of Classic Rayon Ombre and Multicolored threads. As you can see, multiple different looks are achieved depending on how the design is digitized. Rich, wasn't it you that said it, the fun thing about this thread is that every time you use it, the design appears a little bit differently? Yes. Um, for example, the flower there up on the right corner, all those petals were done in a variegated thread. And it's, it makes each particular sellout unique. Um, obviously, the color selections that you can get are all going to be similar if you're sewing it with one particular spool of thread. But it's just a, a beautiful and easy way for you to get a very unique look to your embroidery. And what's fun about it is you don't have to really do anything different. I mean, digitizing-wise or anything else, all you need to do is load the thread and run it, and you get that kind of an interesting look. Nice. Let's take a, a quick look at how to recognize which colors come in the four different weights we just discussed. While all the colors are color card are available in Classic Rayon number 40, look for the colored dot that corresponds to the other three weights that are available. For example, if you look at your up, um, up in the left-hand corner, the dark green 1103, um, all of the colors, like we said, are in the color card, are in available in um, the regular 40 weight. And here you've got three dots, the blue, the red, and the yellow. So that particular color is available in all four of the weights. Uh, Michael, while we're on the subject of color, I just wondered if you saw any trends in the colors that are coming through in terms of interior design. Uh, my colors are oftentimes pretty neutral, um, punctuated by stronger color. Um, the different parts of the country seem to be different in color selections as well. Like San Francisco, they, they like jewel tone colors where um, they have dark, cloudy days. They want color in, in their interiors. In LA, where it's sunny, uh, people have a tendency to want neutrals and quiet colors, uh, eucalyptus tones, uh, pale terracottas, um, and Miami, usually bright colors, um, New York. Uh, fresh, but more on the neutral side. It, it really is sort of seasonal, and it is sort of uh, uh, location ruled. But overall, you know, I, I have a line of, 
of embroidery in Los Angeles at a showroom. And it's interesting to, for me to see what colors sell and what, what don't. And I find that people will literally shut down on a pattern because they don't like the color, even though they know that it can be customized to be any color at all. So presentation in color is really important. Um, I think that the uh, color selection in Madeira Classic Rayon is really wonderful. It addresses pretty much all my needs. And what I do is, because a client will undoubtedly come to me and just automatically think that a color is available. It should like, here, match this, you know, perfect, okay, you can do it. And there's no such color in the world in thread anywhere. And what I've come to do is, is again, like I do with the metallic, I reduce the density by half and I start mixing colors. And I know for one project, I was able to do um, about 10 different co color samples by using just uh, three or four different threads. And the variety of colors to choose from, when you start mixing the color like that, is just huge. And um, much more able to come to a close match to these designer fabrics that people bring me. Okay, thank you. Here's a chart that will answer many of the questions that have been coming in um, and will be handy for, for many of you. This shows you which needle size Madeira recommends for getting the best results from each of the weights of classic rayon. Remember to use a ballpoint needle on knits and lo lightly wovens and a sharp on most of your heavier woven goods. Um, do keep in mind that this is a classic rayon needle chart only, um, so we are addressing the, the four different weights that we carry. We do have a full needle chart that's actually online um, as well, and again, we'll, um, we'll send you some links to these on, on um, when we do a follow-up email, because these are going to be important things. By the way, uh, um, I'd like to add something here. Is, uh, these are, this is a great um, chart to follow uh, and for the best results. But I will tell you, as I think I said before, is you can use a size 10 needle if you're um, embroidering on a cap, for example, and you want to use 60 weight thread. Um, I find that it works, it works real well. If you uh, want the best results and you're doing a net or something, then obviously the size 9 needle for 60 weight will give you the best results. Generally speaking, the, smaller, the smallest needle penetration that you can do, the better. So, uh, but this is a great chart to show you what to use for the different weights of thread. Okay. On the uh, 30 size, what what do you do as far as density? 30 weight is going to require um, a lighter density by about 20 percent. 20. Um, just like just like yeah, just like when you're doing 60 weight, you know, you go the mm -hmm. other direction. Um, yeah. So 30 weight, 30 weight, you go you go lighter density. So. And it takes some experimentation, and it depends on what you're sewing on and what your coverage issues are. Uh, for example, if you've got a light color thread and you're going against a dark background, you may have to increase underlay or density slightly to uh, get the coverage you want. But generally speaking, about 20%. Thanks, Rich. Um, now in this chart, you see which threads are available and which put-ups. Um, our all-purpose 40 weight is available in both cones and our mini snap cone. Uh, depending on the types of the sti stitches that you use, you'll get approximately a million stitches from a cone and a quarter million or 250,000 stitches from a mini snap cone. Um, this actually came in as a question, and we were going to address this about, you know, the fact that 60 weight only comes in the, um, uh, the smaller mini snap cones. Um, two things you're going to want to keep in mind with 60 weight is, first, that it contains over 1,600 yards. Um, versus to the, um, that would be compared to the 1,100 yards that the 40 weight comes on in the mini snap cone. So you're getting a, a lot more thread on the, on the cone itself. And the second thing you want to keep in mind is that it's a thinner thread. Um, because it's for those small letters and fine details, it will mean that um, you'll tend to use less yardage on average with this thread 
than you would with any of the thicker threads. Um, so you're going to find, and I think that Rich, you'll agree that the 1,600 plus yards that you're getting on this is more than adequate for, you know, keeping yourself going with it. Absolutely, and and again, it, it even adds to the affordability of it because it's they're not much money. Yeah, you can certainly afford to to, to carry that. So yeah, it works great. Rich, a question came in. It's slightly technical. I'm not sure if you can answer this or not. Um, a question com is coming in from an attendee who's saying, I'm a digitizing customer, sorry, custom embroidery shop. My technician set up my machine and calibrated the bobbin for size 75, 10 needles. How would you deal with this situation? Oh, I, I think what I'm hearing, let me see if I can repeat the question, is, uh, the technician who set up the embroidery machine set it up for 7511 needles, and they're concerned whether they can change to like a 65-9 needle maybe and, and have any problems. Yes. And uh, um, the, the size 11 needle, 7511, is the standard needle that most em new embroidery machines come with, and most technicians set them up for that, but there is no issue at all to, to uh, switch. There's a certain amount of tolerance that, uh, you have in, in the machine setup. So switching from one, like a size 11 needle to a size 9 needle should not cause any problem, just like you can go from a size 11 needle onto a size uh, 14 or 12 and not, not have any issues either. Um, I suppose that if you wanted to get it really dialed in, yeah, you could probably have a, a technician uh, set it up uh, perfectly for that size needle, but it's not necessary. And you're saying that it's not going to throw the machine off by just changing the needle? No, Good. not at all. Not at all. Um, just to repeat, another set of numbers, a question came in. Um, based on the number, sorry, based on the design that you're using and the type of stitches, you're going to get approximately a million stitches from a 5,500-yard 5, cone and 250,000 stitches from an 1,100-yard mini snap cone. Okay, let's move on to our next slide. Um, and this is uh, just a, a note on storage. You always want to store embroidery thread away from excessive high or low temperatures, away from direct heat, dust, humidity, sunlight. This is true for all embroidery thread. And if you do this, you will prolong the life of your thread. Yeah, and I also like to add that um, I, I don't like to handle my thread too much either. Um, because your hand has oils and um, dirt and things on it, so you want to try to handle your thread as, as little as possible um, and uh, protect it. I've also heard that if you have a rayon thread, I've had for years and years that runs still drill well, but I have also heard that if you have any trouble, and it's probably true with, uh, with polyester, but mostly I think rayon, if you have problems with rayon thread, sometimes I've heard putting it in the freezer a little while and then you can put it back on the machine and it'll, it'll correct any issues. But I've never had that issue so I, I can't say for sure. Okay, thank you. We wanted to touch on aftercare um, after you've used classic rayon in a garment. Um, and, and just a, a note of, um, of, not caution, but to, to let people know what, what we've found over the years. Embroidered items are best washed in warm water with a mild detergent. You never want to leave a wet or damp embroidered item folded or pressed together. This is particularly important for items washed for the first time. Um, don't tumble dry unless the item's been thoroughly rinsed. Never wring out an embroidered item and iron embroidered articles on the reverse side between two pressing cloths. Use a steam iron rather than spraying the embroidery or ironing over a damp cloth. Um, due to the high quality manufacturing process that is used in the production of Madeira's classic rayon, um, unlike some other rayon threads on the market, it is extremely color fast and can be washed in water of up to 203 degrees, which is pretty much boiling, with a mild detergent. Detergents that contain bleach, peroxide, or any optical brighteners, however, should never be used since they may cause discoloration. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, um, if, if water is introduced to a garment that's embroidered with rayon or polyester threads prior to its first washing, on occasion, a halo effect can occur from extra dye on the thread. Um, this can be caused by the removal process of a water-soluble water topping or the steaming out of hoop marks. 
While it's not a common occurrence, don't panic if you see this happen. You just wa simply wash that garment in the warmest water recommended for both the garment and the thread. So you want to keep in mind you've introduced two separate um, products here. So you want to use the highest or the hottest water um, recommended until that extra dye is rinsed out. Do not dry the garment until it's um, clear of extra dye. So this is addressed in both rayon and polyester. It can happen with both. Um, so you may ask why does this happen? Uh, we'll compare it to a new pair of dark denim jeans or new black socks. Have you ever noticed that dark wash water that's released during the rinse cycle, during the first few washing? Um, the extra dry in the embroidery thread is on a much smaller scale, which is why it occurs. Um, and you may never see it, you know, just like you might never see that denim, um, dark denim wash out. So it, it's a rare occurrence, um, but does happen. And it's usually when you're using a topping and you're using water um, to try and get that extra topping off. And then that's why you, you never want to stack those dampened garments um, because that can actually enhance that as well. Thank you. I'm going to take a look at a couple of questions now. Um, Rich and Michael, question came in, what digitizing software do you recommend? <laughs> well, I don't know. Michael, you want to answer that? Or? Well, the, I, I really only know Paul. So um, I can recommend Pulse, but um, I have no real experience with with any other software. Again, that was uh, software that was being sold at the time I purchased my Tajima from Hirsch, and um, I really didn't do any research. I just bought it, um, and I'm I'm not sorry. I used the Maestro version of the newest. Um, the, the newest version of of the software and and uh, I, I enjoy it. It has its quirks, but I think almost every one of the programs probably does. Um, but I'm used to it. How about you, Rich? Well, I've used several different softwares. I currently use Wilcom. Um, I used I started learning digitizing using CompuCon. Some of you know that software. Um, my feeling is this: softwares are unique. Um, a unique tool and for each of us we're being individuals we think differently and think uh, and react to, the, to our tools differently I guess you could say so one person that might think that uh, Pulse is really easy to use might find Wilcom harder might find the opposite you know with somebody else so I think it's really one of those things that you have to a personal selection I will tell you this that um, I do am a firm believer that uh, all software is not all the same. Most software do the same things. For for example, in digitizing, really all you have to know is how to run your software in that each software makes a running stitch, it makes a satin stitch, and it makes a tatami or a fill stitch. And as long as it does those three things, then what you all you need to know, know is, is the digitizing principles and how to apply them because the software, again, is just a tool to create those designs using those three stitch types. But uh, a final note I will say is that not all software is, is, is alike. Uh, some software uh, perform, let's say, the execution process better than others. Um, so the software we use, remember, perform um, thousands of mathematical formulas instantly when they create uh, stitches. I mean, they're calculating underlay, they're calculating stitch length, they're calculating all that in a certain space that you're defining, um, all these things. So it's a matter of how good that software calculates those, and I believe they're called algorithm, algorithms, I can't say that uh, very well. Uh, but anyway, each one is a little different, and so you might find that uh, there's a little bit better stitch quality from one to the other. But overall, you know, I think it's an individual thing, and I encourage all of you, if you're looking for software, to go look and see them demonstrated at some of these um, uh, trade shows and things, because that's the best way to, to learn. And then um, I think uh, just uh, learning the software as best you can, and then learn how to digitize, learn the different concepts and, and the rules that you need to follow, regardless of the software you use. Thank you, Rich. Um, we're going to summarize just very quickly um, in looking at our classic rayon. 
Um, it's a very reliable, easy running, high quality thread that offers a wide selection of colors and weights. It has a beautiful, lustrous appearance, and the four weights um, are around for all of your embroidery needs. We want to thank you for joining us today. We appreciate the time you spent with us to learn more about our classic rayon. Remember that we will be reviewing all of your questions, and by tomorrow, we're aiming for tomorrow, probably Friday, the latest. We should have all the answers and a special offer you might want to take advantage of to send out to you by email. If you missed any part of this webinar or would like to review it, it will be available for viewing on our website and on YouTube. Um, thank you also to Rich and Michael for your time today and for sharing the wealth of knowledge that you bring to your businesses. Thank you very much.